welcome to Community Voices with Carly Lissa Thorne. Today, I have with me Christy Rufino, and we're going to be talking about her organization, Dynamic Professional Women's Network. Welcome, Christy. Welcome, Carly. Hi, how are you today? I'm very good, and I'm very excited to have you with me today. So today, we're going to be talking about empowering women, leadership, and many other things. So first, I'd love for you to share with the audience, what was your inspiration behind starting your organization? Oh boy, well, many, many years ago, it seems like now, it seems like a lifetime ago, but um, I had just gotten out of, out of a divorce and I needed to go find a job. So I got a great job at a mortgage company and I loved what I did, but as, um, as a loan officer and as a, with a commission only job, I knew I had to get out there and find clients, build my business through referrals. So I did start joining Chambers of Commerces and different other networking opportunities. And what I found is I wasn't really getting the traction that I wanted fast enough. So I heard this thing called, you know, networking or a referral group. And there was a lot of them out at the time. I got my, both of my dogs, of course, right now on attention. Um, sorry about that. But so referral groups were really popular. They were really popular back then. And I heard, heard about them because I didn't know. I was really new to the networking world. But what I did is once I started researching the different groups, I found that there was a mortgage person already occupied in every group in my area. So I didn't let that stop me. What I did is I got some women together that I had met and we kind of started our own networking group, our own referral group. And um, it was kind of challenging at first because we only had three women when we first got started. But what we did is we got together some great policies and a great structure that turned out to be super successful and, and very, um, uh, conducive for the working mom that we just ended up by having a very full, very productive chapter. And after time, um, we ended up by having a lot of women that wanted to join us and they couldn't because we were full at that time. So I just kind of started another chapter in my area based on the needs of the, of, you know, the, of our community. Um, but after time that continued to, to grow and continue to build where we would have more people hear about us and more people would want to open chapters in their area. And so we just kept building that way. It was a very organic start um, to how we took that one chapter and, and brought it into multiple chapters. And now, oh gosh, that was officially, we took that business or, you know, that first chapter and started expanding seven years ago. So since then we have, I think we've got 28 chapters all over Illinois, Wisconsin, and we're just getting into Texas. And I have a few other states that are right behind them that we're working on to get those launched also. So there's a couple things I'd like to talk about. One is women's networks are growing more and more. I kind of wish that men would start creating some networks. I think, it, I think groups in general are very empowering. I think community is very empowering. So one thing I'd love to talk about is referrals. As you know, referrals for business, not just a networking organization, is, is very powerful. So what are some tips and tools you can give people on referrals? So you actually grew your business, obviously, through referrals. So how did you grow your business, your networking business, through referrals? Oh, boy. Well, like I had said, we, we grew pretty much organically by the women of our organization giving referrals to us based on the people that they knew. You know, referrals are all about sharing, um, connecting with people that we know, like, and trust and sharing that opportunity with others. And I think as women, we're, we tend to be natural networkers anyways. We, we're constantly thinking about who we can help. Um, and so the women in, in our organization, when we first got started, they really loved the fact that they were in this community of women that supported each other and they, they were anxious to share it. They were anxious to be able to, you know, give referrals and um, build within their chapter and and give business to each other in that referral network. But then that also helped us grow our network stronger, um, just because they they got it and they loved what they were a part of and they wanted to share it with everybody that they knew. And what I'd like to ask that is what people need to understand is. Would you want to do business with someone you don't know, or do you want to do business with someone, like you said, you like, trust, and know? So I think referrals is a very important part of business. 
not just within a networking group, but a part of business. And business, again, like your business, is vital to referrals. So I think it's a really important aspect of anything and of life because I, again, when people want to introduce me to people or someone they want me to befriend or become friends with, I want it to be, to be a referral because yeah. it's, again, coming from someone that I trust, know, and like. So I think yeah. that's so important. It is. And, you know, I had the great fortune of being connected um, early on with Bob Berg, and he is the author of The Go-Giver. Um, and we actually had, he, he's, he's a great mentor of mine now, and we had him come speak for our organization many years in a row. Um, we give that book out to um, a, a certain level of our membership because we really build our foundation on being go-givers and how we can support each other and how we can help each other. Um, and you know, Bob's book on, on that and as well as Endless Referrals is a key part of how we build our community. Um, and I think that's why it, it's become so strong is we're really focused on serving each other, helping each other. And when we do that, we know things are going to come back. So, you know, when you're dealing with a whole bunch of women that are, are givers and they're focusing on generating referrals for each other, it just, it's, it's become a very powerful, powerful community. And I call that the ripple effect. And I absolutely agree. I can't speak highly enough of Bob Berg and the go-giver, the endless referrals. I tell everybody, read every single one of Bob Berg's books because it will really impact your life. Because it changes your mindset. People think if I give, I will not get. And it, and it, what they don't, and, and that's a funny part is what they don't get. And it's not, it's not being a martyr in giving. It's giving without expectation. The funny part about that is when you give without expectation, you naturally receive anyway because it's the law of reciprocity. I can never say that word. I can never say that word correctly, but you know what I'm saying. It's just a natural law. And yeah. And if you actually do read The Go-Giver, and you do read Endless Referrals, and you do, um, I mean, he's got a wonderful community now on Facebook that you can join. Um, you know, just go, I encourage anyone to go to BobBerg.com, or Ber actually Berg.com. But if you go to BobBerg.com, it'll still go to Berg.com. But go actually, go, go read The Go-Giver. Go explore, you know, any of his books that he has out there. It'll actually change your mindset and understand that it, in giving, you will change your mindset, you will change your business, and your business will excel. Yes. So yes, we both love Bob Burke. Okay. But anyways, it, it just, it, I know how it's changed my life, I know how it's changed many people's lives, including I know yours. Um, so now let's get to how your business is starting to empower women. I know you're really excited because you, your chapters have expanded, and I also know you have this wonderful book series that you're working on. Um, which I'm really excited about. So why don't you share what you're doing with the book series and how that now is empowering women. Okay. Well, I actually was connected um, to Michelle Print through Bob Berg. See how it all works. It all comes together. Um, and Michelle Print is a motivational speaker as well as a publisher. And she invited me to be in a book that she was putting together, an anthology project. And it was a great experience for me. First of all, it allowed me to get my first book um, very easily without doing anything but sharing my story. Um, it allowed me to collaborate with the other professionals in the book. So not only was I marketing my book, but all of these other people in the book were also marketing it. Um, and, and it just gave me a great experience on, on the whole publishing world. And when I was done with that, I'm just thinking, well, gosh, that was so great. Why don't I replicate that process for the women of my chapter. So that is what inspired me to put our first anthology book together and it was it's actually called Overcoming Mediocrity and I've got a little book here um, and basically it's a collection of stories from 22 women who have created their own lives of significance. And it actually started off by being a book that was meant to be used as a tool for my members but once we started putting the book together, we had women from all over hearing about it and wanting to be a part of it. So it is a book filled with stories from women um, that are members as well as non-members of my organization. Uh, and then when that was done, we actually made it to the bestseller list right away. So those authors have that bestseller title that they can claim. 
Um, but when we were done with that, we rolled right into our second book, which is here. Um, and what we're doing is we're building our brand. We're actually building the Overcome the Overcoming Mediocrity brand. So it's going to be the next Chicken Soup series, just like that. Um, and so each book is a little different. It's got a different theme, but it, they all contain a collection of women, a collection of stories from amazing women. So it's been great. And we're actually starting on our next book, and it is going to be the Strong Women edition. So there are so many great women that I've been interviewing um, that I, I just can't wait to be able to share their stories and, and get focused on the marketing of, of them and their businesses and you know having this as a platform for them to leave a legacy with sharing their story so it's such a great experience that sounds wonderful so what is it, what is it that you're focused on for yourself I always like I always like people in the audience to also learn about you as a person so what are some of your passions oh personally yes <laughs> Um, well, my both of my kids are, I'm, I'm an empty nester, so that's been great. It's given me a little time. I've got two amazing dogs that are fun, and I'm just crossing my fingers that they don't start barking here shortly if the UPS guy comes or something. Um, but I think my biggest passion is motorcycles. I spend a lot of time on my motorcycle, and any minute that I'm not working, I'm out on two wheels, and it is, it's like kind of like my, my zen, that's my zen, that's my time when I have to recharge my battery and I just love it. See, you know, most people would not know know that about you. Now, I have to say, I love motorcycles. I grew up being on the, now I've never been a person driving, but I have been on the back of a motorcycle most of my life. And I have to say, I can understand why you love motorcycles. There's nothing like the feeling of being on an open road and having the wind in your face and just, it's, it's a very different feeling than being in a car because you're really experiencing kind of like a oneness with your surroundings. It, it's just, it is. It's this most meditative experience of just being that one with, you know, you can, I can't explain it, but the wind and the elements and the most experience, wonderful experience I had was um, actually in California, but going up really high into the mountains of Malibu and you're actually motorcycling through the clouds. <laughs> like, and it was so surreal because they were like literally going through the clouds and, and the and it was like really, really high up. It was absolutely amazing. And of course the really windy, twisty roads and it just it, uh, yeah, I um actually miss it. I haven't been for a while. Um, and obviously when I grew up in New York State um, for a while, it, it's it, you know, going through the 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 fall, the fall changing colors of the leaves and of course it's a little bit more dangerous. Um, you have to be a little more careful because, you know, slippage, but it just it is, and it's a it's a very beautiful experience being. Uh, and now, of course, when I understand, obviously, it's a very different experience being the driver versus the passenger. However, my experience being a passenger, I absolutely loved my years and years of, of being on a bike. Um, yeah, absolutely loved it. Um, yes. And I spent over probably 15 years uh, doing that. So yeah. I can totally understand your bliss for, I remember I remember the years of, you know, like when it's really cold and you can't, and you can't wait till it's warm again. It's just that, you know, kind of, oh my God, when, 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 you know? So. Yeah. I have been writing for 25 years. Um, wow. And part of the joy of it is the community, you know, writing with other people, friends, and, and writing together. Um, but I don't need to do that to enjoy. I sometimes will just go off on my own and, and just go out and be, like like you said, it's like being with the world. You've got the wind in you, and you're just connecting in a way that is so, so peaceful, as well as you can't think about all the crazy stuff in your head. You have mm -hmm. to let it all go, and you have to be present in the moment. And so you that's my time to just like leave all my worries behind and just get on there and enjoy the, the sights, the sounds, the smells, everything. You're, you're just experiencing life to this, like, in the rawest manner. And um, I've been on quite a few amazing trips um, with the great roads and, and just the beautiful, beautiful things. And it's just so different as a rider than a passenger, Carly. So we're going to have to work on that with you. <laughs> the longest <laughs> trek I took was 750 miles. So I've been on a very long, because uh, one of my friends, um, he used to do something called the Iron Butt, 
where they go like from literally cross country, like like literally. I mean, it's like five days riding. Now, I didn't I didn't do that part with them, but I did do one just to get an experience of what it'd be like to go on a really long, you know, for me a long trek, 750 miles. So so I have experienced long treks and short treks. Um, but yes, but I do. I do really understand both parts because we do. Sometimes we do, like you said, with the community, and that that also is very interesting. Um, doing the community rides as well, you meet some very interesting, very amazing people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I have some interesting stories that I could share with you, not on the radio show, about about those community rides, and I know some pretty interesting people in the motorcycle world. Yeah. So uh, that'll be another time. But anyways, yeah, I can totally understand. Um, but again, see, I love doing these types of questions too because it really gets people to. Um, I, what I've understood from doing all these interviews, um, and I deal with you know, speaking with speakers of all walks of life, is that people, like you said, like like know and trust. They want to know who you are beyond your business. They want to get to know who you are as a person because again, that's a likability of trusting, knowing, liking you. And it's always interesting to find out these little tidbits. I would have never known that. And again, we found something that we both, I found a little bit more passion in me from that because I love motorcycles. Now some people don't know that about me. They just learned something. So, you know, it's, I think it's always wonderful to ask these questions. Well, we all have so many facets of our lives, don't we? Exactly. Now, another thing, I always ask people that do have pets, because I always have, you know, if you were saying worrying about your dog barking, by the way, which... You know, I always say to people, don't say these things, because whenever they do say these things, then the dogs bark. I always say, and when the dogs bark, say, I bring them on camera. I've had I've had more cats, dogs, and babies on camera. <laughs> Here's my dog. <laughs> oh, hi, baby. What's your baby's name? Um, well, this is Missy, and I've got a, a Doberman and a Minpin, so they look identical. It's just one is 90 pounds, and one is like 10 okay, you gotta you got to bring up so that people can see her head in the camera. Okay, here's here's Missy. Missy. Wait, you gotta, okay, wait, wait, I'm gonna stop talking so you can hold her and say her name aloud. This is Missy. So Missy is like 10 pounds, and um, my son brought her home to my for, to my wonderful fortune now. And then I don't know if you can see my dog down there. He's I don't know. Wait, he's there somewhere. <laughs> so he's taking a nap right now, being very very good. Um, but it's a Doberman and a Minpin, and he's 80 pounds and she's 10, and they look identical other than their size. So it's really, really cute to walk down the street with them because everybody really gets a kick out of them. Well, it's just been absolutely delightful to have you on. Is there any last-minute tips you have for the audience? Well, um, tips. Well, all I can say is get the Go-Giver book because I think that's an amazing foundation to anybody's business as well as your personal life. Because um, it is all about the law of receptivity. <laughs> and I know. <laughs> we well, both, Bob Burke is going to be angry at us. We both flubbed that word up. <laughs> Sorry, Bob. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Um, but yeah, just focus on being a giver because, you know, the it's the law of receptivity. <laughs> The, the more you give, um, the more you give back. So uh, definitely get that book, and um, you know I encourage you to get connected in in some kind of community. You know my community is the, the Dynamic Professional Women's Network, but it's all about women supporting each other. So there's so many women's organizations out there that really really focus on on helping each other. And I think as women, I know as women, we can be so much more powerful as if we work together as a team. So I'm all about supporting supporting that. Also, since this is also a podcast, and people sometimes, since it is a podcast, they cannot read your lower third right now, can you please let everyone know where they can find you? Absolutely. I actually have quite a few different websites out there for different resources, but if you go to christyrafino.com, that is going to get you to pretty much anything that you need um, that I have, any kind of resources I have. It'll get you to our publishing division. It'll get you to... Um, our women's network, as well as a couple other sites. So it's christyrafino.com is my main hub for all my other connections, as well as you can connect with me on the various social media platforms like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Pinterest, and all of the rest of them. So I'm out there in Google+. And can you do me a favor and spell that as well? christyrafino.com? Yes, please. C-H-R-I-S-T-I-E. 
R-U-F-F-I-N-O dot com. Perfect. Because we always assume everyone knows how to, when they hear our name, spell it. And I just always like to at least spell it once, so you never know. It's been absolutely delight to, to have you on since um, we've known each other for a while now through Bob Berg's network and the Go-Giver community. So I really am just really thrilled to have you on. Thank you so much for joining me and taking time out of your busy schedule to be with me. So I really appreciate it. Well, I appreciate it too, Carly. Thank you so much. And you were a great interviewer. I made this go through, go through really, really smoothly and, and really great. So anyways, everybody, you have been on Community Voices with Carly Lissa Thorne, your host today. And you can find me at CarlyLissaThorne.com, C-A-R-L-Y-A-L-Y-S-S-A-T-H-O-R-N-E.com. I always love bringing you valuable tips and tools, and I look forward to spending more time with you next week. I wish everyone a wonderful day. Have a great one, and I will see you next week. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs>